Welcome to Linux in the Shell episode 11. My name is Dan Washko and I'll be your host. Today we're going to be talking about the disk usage or DU command and as always if you have not already looked at the website I strongly suggest you do so. Listen to the audio file as this is merely going to show you examples of using the DU command and, and what the results are. So without further ado let's jump in. The DU command by default displays all the files and directories in a current location, recurses through them, and we'll show you their usage how many in blocks, a kilobyte blocks right there. So you can see there's uh, there's one directory, it has two, uh, a single subdirectory, a child directory, and under that there's another directory. So there's three directories deep is interface, and it shows the, the values for each of those locations. And finally, a, a summary or a total of the values being used in that location. So if I were to pass it, uh, when we do that, we only see the files, or the directories, but if I wanted to see the files, I can pass it to dash A, and notice that I see a total of all the files in dash A there. Now again, I said this is kilobytes. You can change that by passing the capital B for block size, and then one of the abbreviated values, uh, K for kilobytes, which you see there, M for megabytes, and G for gigabytes, and you say, well, wait a second, Dan, what's going on here? T for terabytes. How could a file that is two megabytes of space being used, two megabytes of worth of blocks being used, also be one gigabyte or one terabyte? Well, it's a little kludgy. Um, it, it shows an integer, so it doesn't show percentages. It, it is, uh, it, it, space is being taken up, so it has to give it a value of one. Uh, so just be aware of that. I prefer to use the dash H a lot of times on newer systems, and it gives you human readable output there, so you can see that it truncates it to the most readable value. So you've got a mixture of kilobytes and megabytes in there. If you try and pass it something that's a lot larger than your system has in your system, it'll give you an error that says, uh, whoa, that's too large. Now, when you look at here, by default, it shows you all the uh, values here and then totals them up. You can just get that total by using the dash S or summary option right there. Um, now, about a few other options here. If I did a DUA, notice that it shows me a lot of files in here. Let's say I wanted to, if I look in the documentation, I have a bunch of PDF files. So if I, if I just wanted to see how much space those PDF files are taking up, uh, human readable, I can do that, and it shows me those individual files on each line. I could also get a total for how much space those are taken up by the dash C option in there. Now let's say, uh, let's step back a second. Let's say I wanted to exclude files. I can, whoop, do you exclude equals, and I can do PDF, and it will exclude the values for all the PDFs. Let's, uh, let's pass it the A so I can show you that it is, in fact, excluding. You don't see any PDFs in here, but you do see a lot of XSD. Well, we can change that. And now let's, uh, let's exclude XSD files. So no more XSD, but you see PDFs. Very handy. Uh, now, let's say you wanted a list of you know, multiple different kind of extensions or files that you wanted to exclude. You can create, which I have done here, uh, a file that lists everything that you want to exclude and call that in there too. Exclude from equals ignore and A. And notice right there we've no PDFs or XSD files. Very, very handy. Uh, you can control recursion with the max depth or the dash D. So if I do D right there, DU, D1, it only recurses into one value directory, du, d2, and only recurses in two layers. Uh, I can do that. So you only see the stuff in, up into the first parent directory or the second directory in there. It doesn't recur, it only recurses in two levels. Uh, and But it reports the values as if it recurs through all of them. So the, the, it'll limit how far down it'll show, but it will not limit the actual values, uh, uh, how much space they're being taken up. Now, I have made emphasis about block space, that is showing you block space. And that's important because um, if I were to run the E2F, uh, dump e, E2FS 
uh, my device SDA 7 which is my home directory grep and I would do grep for block size it shows me a block size of 496 what that means is each block on my file system is 4096 bytes or 4 kilobytes to be precise um, so my my disk is partitioned into um, 4 kilobyte blocks that's how data is stored and each block, when you write a file to uh, the file system, it writes it out into the blocks, and each block uh, contains data. So it can only contain up to 4,096 bytes um, per block. And if a file gets written out and it doesn't, it doesn't fill up that entire block, uh, that block whatever's left ends up being kind of wasted space. Now, I don't want to say wasted space, but it's, it's not being used. So when you look at the du command, what that isn't saying is, you know, let's look, let me, let me give you a good example. And we can do this with the, the dd command. So if I do ddif equals dev zero and of equals du test, block size equals 4096 and a count of one, that creates one block right there. So if I did du, du test, that's one block of data on there, 4096 bytes. It's, it's taking up um, 4K. So that's one block is 4K in size. So notice that right there, duh, D, ah, duh, du test takes up one block, one kilobyte of space. Now, what I've done there is that that's one full block of space, and you see that it's 4K. Now, if I were to do DD, let's go back up here again to our command, and I were to pass it, let's take two more values, 4097, and let's say 7000. Two different values right there, and, and we'll give one more. Let's do, what's uh, 496 and 490, 4096 would be... Uh, 8,192. Okay, so now, let's look at these. And what did I do wrong? Uh, I named them all the same, so I overwrote everything. So let's call this 2. Let's call this 3. And let's call this 4. And then let's go back here and rewrite this to one what I've done there so now I have I have four files there I'm gonna get rid of my documentation folder I'm not gonna need that anymore so let's do a disk usage in here right now so 40 disk usage a so notice that now I'm seeing that disk du test 2 all these are showing as 8 kilobytes except for disk test one and you notice you remember that we created these we created these of different sizes but they're all showing the exact same amount of space being taken up well to rectify that there's the dash dash a p p a r e n t size option there whoop let's let's pass there and you notice that you start looking here and says oh well, wait a minute okay so that du test that we created which was 4097 is uh, closer to being five kilobytes in space du test one is four kilobytes and 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 so on now you can actually get a better representation uh, boop, boop. I think we do in, in bits there so that's 497 that's that takes up technically two blocks of space, but actually only five kilobytes. This takes up um, two blocks of space, and it's accurate at eight one ninety four. This takes one block of space. This four hundred ninety six. This takes. Um, why do we create two of the same size? That's ridiculous. Uh, anyway, disk test four is seven thousand. But if we just run the du in here. It shows us as blocks. So it, be aware of that. That's something to be aware of, and I talk about it in the documentation. So if that confuses you a little bit, just be just be aware of that. Um, the last thing I want to talk about in this example is some of the other stuff that 
that disk usage can show aside from file size and apparent file size. And that is time. Ugh. Time shows a nice little representation here of the the modification time for these files. So these files were all created roughly at the same time. So if I were to do uh let's say VI test one, here I am. And I were to do time in here, says uh test one, I just created it. Now if I come in here and I edit test one again, let's learn. And I do test A, you notice that the time has changed. 2014. Um, well, that's not a good time because I I finished it in the same time that I I edited it in the same time that I finished it. So, hoo-ha. Ho-ho. And if I do it now, you notice that it changed. Now, that's showing modification time right off the bat. You can change the value of that time by saying A time. So access time, the last time that file was accessed was at 2015. If I were to do cat du test 2, and I were to do du time, see the access time has changed. Now, let's try one other different thing, c time. c time, right there, that shows values in there. And when a file was accessed, didn't change the c time. But when a file gets modified, so if I were to do file dtest 2, C time changed, but an A time changed, an M time changed. Oh, you don't need to pass M time in there. M time changed all the, to, to the last time I messed with it. But watch this. If I were to change CHMOD plus X DU test, and I were to do. Now, I didn't make any change, I changed permissions on there. But if I were to do equals C time, notice that the value changed for DU test. That's because what we're seeing there is inode information. And remember that modification time is when it's and, and it's using inode information. You can change the value of uh, of the C time without changing the modification time. But if you change the modification time, you're going to change the C time. So just be aware of that. There's a lot of stuff with the DU command. I suggest uh, if you want some further information, head on over to the website, linuxintheshell.org. Look at the entry. Uh, read up. I got links that explain a lot of this stuff. If it's not as, uh, as apparent on the website, uh, I'll clear up all this stuff. Uh, thank you very much. I'll see you in a fortnight, and I thank Hacker Public Radio for their support. Have a great day.